military installations somewhere in the United States, there are those who believe that the government is hiding the remains of an alien spacecraft that mysteriously crashed to Earth. With more and more scientific evidence of alien encounters and UFO sightings, the idea of creatures from another planet might not be as far-fetched as we once thought. In fact, one of you out there could have the next alien encounter. Enjoy tonight's special. I'm going to walk over and see if I can sneak a peek. Maybe not. Scientific verification of extraterrestrial life forms routinely arriving on Earth. Top secret reports from ongoing military investigations. Compelling home videos of alien craft captured within the last few months. World figures who have gone public with their own extraterrestrial experiences. The shocking history of government misinformation programs designed to prevent widespread panic and personal accounts of those who have been abducted and studied against their will. It's happened to me, it's happened to my sister, and I believe my mother. My son looks me straight in the eyes, and he says, they took blood out of you, Mama. They don't ask permission, they take you. But it's such an incredible secret, nobody wants to believe it. There is valuable scientific data that would prove once and for all that planet Earth is being visited by a highly evolved intelligence that is not from this world. Wait a minute. I've had enough. Stop it. From beyond the boundaries of our perceptions, intelligent beings are beckoning mankind to join the galactic community. It's an invitation which is both wondrous and terrifying. This is the nature of alien encounters. Mankind has the unique ability to ignore the obvious, especially when the facts reveal a disturbing truth. We once believed the sun revolved around the Earth. When Galileo demonstrated the reverse is true in 1634, he was charged with heresy and placed under house arrest for the last eight years of his life. The charges were later dropped, 342 years later. Now as we approach a new millennium, Mankind is in the midst of the most profound event in history, actual contact with intelligent life from other planets. For nearly 50 years, officials have been documenting routine alien encounters here on Earth. And thousands of people have seen or experienced this alien presence. Yet many others still refuse to acknowledge the obvious evidence all around them. What is it like to be confronted by a creature whose intelligence and skill is far beyond the comprehension of mankind? Would it be enlightening? Would it be an exercise in terror? Or perhaps both? Here in the new Tomorrowland at the Walt Disney World Resort near Orlando, Florida, these concepts are brought to life as guests experience their own alien encounter, a sensory thriller from Disney and George Lucas. We'll give you a sneak preview later in the show. But first, we must prepare you for the future with some shocking insights from the recent past. Alien ships seem to arrive in waves. And if the last few years are any indication, planet Earth is experiencing a tsunami of sightings. Mexico City, 1992. If you were arriving from outer space, this would be your first stop. It's the world's largest metropolitan area, easy to spot from a distance. Saucers arriving here have an affinity for military helicopters. This one was caught stalking a squadron during a national holiday celebration. Dozens of people videotaped the craft. Millions more just stared in disbelief as it covered 200 square miles of territory in a matter of minutes. Canada, 1991. In a residential area just outside Ottawa, this alien ship was photographed landing in what appears to be a prearranged site. UFO investigators claim the structure of this craft reveals a technology previously undocumented. This sighting is known as the Guardian case, named after the pseudonym of the photographer who wishes to keep his identity secret to avoid harassment from local authorities uncomfortable with the notion of alien intruders. 
For the last few months of 1994 and lately in 1995, Gulf Breeze, Florida has been ground zero for alien encounters. Especially during the day, extraterrestrial craft have become common ornaments in the uneasy skies. Over those dunes, right there. There she is, right there. Oh my God. Residents of Gulf Breeze routinely aim their home video cameras at the horizon. More often than not, they capture an astounding alien display. There it is. There it is. Right out there. So it looks like an egg on top and an egg on bottom. You would think these alien sightings would be front page news. So why have they received almost no national attention? The answer is simple. For governments determined to maintain their authority, extraterrestrial contact is pure dynamite. There's beings from another planet. We don't know where they come from. We don't know what they're doing here. There's nothing we can do about it. Meet Captain Kevin Randall, retired Air Force intelligence officer, now a top investigator of alien encounters. Anytime a technologically superior civilization comes in contact with a technologically inferior civilization, the technologically inferior civilization ceases to exist. Not necessarily through conquest, not necessarily through invasion, but because the technology changes the underlying social structures of that civilization and it uh, disintegrates. Those fears are reflected in a 1960 federally funded study by the Brookings Institution, which warned that public knowledge of alien life could cause civilization to collapse. So they began a policy of covering up and hiding the information, but they also began a policy of ridiculing, so that people who really see something are afraid to come forward. This isn't right to do the ridicule. I mean, a lot of people suffer. Retired Army officer Clifford Stone certainly suffered after he began private research into the UFO phenomena while still in the service. Well, I was given a lawful order while I was in the military to back off. I refused that lawful order. That resulted in me having to go to be psychoanalyzed, which kind of backfired on my command. But I was actually given a lawful order not to write to members of Congress without first getting it approved through my command and not to uh, talk to members of the media. Of course, I went out and violated all those directives simply because I felt they had no right, that I had a right. He also has determination. This collection of classified government documents represents years of determined effort by Stone to open the UFO files and offer fresh leads to investigators on the trail of the truth. It is not surprising that this book is making top military officials very uncomfortable. I think that some of the underlying concerns they have is the impact it will have on society as a whole if the information is ever released. But why have aliens chosen to visit our small blue planet hidden on the distant fringes of an insignificant star cluster? Well, we invited them here. When we return, what is attracting alien visitors to planet Earth? Extraterrestrials take aim on America's military. A crashed saucer becomes a top secret bombshell. The nation's capital becomes a cosmic crossroads. And later, how Disney Imagineers have designed a way to prepare humans for their inevitable alien encounter. We now return to Alien Encounters from New Tomorrowland. And I looked, and behold, a whirlwind came out of the north, and a fire enfolding itself, and a brightness was about it. Also out of the midst thereof came the likeness of four living creatures. And when the living creatures went, the wheels went by them. And when the living creatures were lifted up from the earth, the wheels were lifted up, for the spirit of the living creature was in the wheels. Ezekiel chapter 1. There have been reports of alien encounters throughout recorded history, often buried in the obscure poetry of mystics. But since the end of World War II, alien encounters have adopted a darker, more menacing demeanor. No longer just spirited lights dancing in the sky, UFOs turn more brazen announcing themselves with surprising ferocity. 
Most alien activity on Earth in this century seems to have been sparked by the single most profound technological achievement in human history. The atomic bomb did more than blow away every conventional notion of combat. It also saddled mankind with the awesome responsibility of life and death for the entire planet. But what the world didn't know in 1945 was that the atomic bomb's brilliant burst of energy would also be mankind's cosmic calling card, announcing to the universe that a technological society had evolved on a small blue planet in the backwaters of the stars. So as the world celebrated the war's end in 1945, aliens who heard man's atomic trumpet were already charting their course towards Earth, responding to our open invitation. As early as 1947, the large alien ships began to arrive, navigated by living creatures. Their advanced physics allowed them to transverse the galaxy and pierce Earth's atmosphere with amazing speed. The U.S. military immediately went on the alert against the unknown menace. Sightings were perceived as threats to the security of an America still reeling from the edgy consciousness of war. And the sightings were taking place all across the country. I glanced up and there were three flying saucers in a V with uh, what appeared to be a dome on the top with, I can't be sure, but I believe I saw the sun glinting off of uh, well, windows or observation portals of sort. I think it was from outer space, but friendly. Army fighter planes are on patrol for flying saucers. Cameras installed to photograph them. Portland, Oregon, the area from which came the first weird reports. This flying saucer patrol shows how the Air Forces, while not putting too much stock in the mysterious things in the sky, are investigating. The control tower is in touch and on the watch. So are a whole lot of people these days. They're seeing flying saucers everywhere. Flocks of fantastic disks flying through the air. But the military finally had to admit that something was happening that they didn't understand, offering their first and only public statement on the UFO phenomenon. The recent sightings are in no way connected with any secret development by any agency of the United States. They weren't always called flying saucers. Some reports claim they resembled other household objects. The public was fascinated and anxious to make contact. But our official response remained aggressive, sometimes sparking deadly games of high-speed, high-altitude cat and mouse. National Guard Captain Thomas Mantell played that game and quickly became a grisly statistic. His last words, as Mantell soared at an altitude of 20,000 feet, are a chilling commentary on the power of the alien ships. I'm closing in to take a look. It looks metallic and of tremendous size. It's going up now as fast as I am. That's 360 miles per hour. I'm going after it. Moments later, Captain Mantell's mission had ended. Occasionally, the tables were turned. More than one alien craft crashed and was recovered for secret U.S. military research. The most famous case took place in July of 1947, just outside the community of Roswell, New Mexico. Famous because local officials openly admitted they had retrieved an alien ship before their commanders instructed them to keep the story confidential. What you can't explain, they reasoned, you must deny. July of 1947, the Army Air Forces at Roswell announced we had captured a flying saucer. You can say our government announced in July of 1947 they had a flying saucer. Three hours later, they announced, no, no, it's merely a weather balloon. The officers at Roswell made a mistake. But our government has come forward and said, yes, we had a flying saucer. Then they take, took it back. Any one of your viewers can go back to the newspapers on July 8th, July 9th, 1947, and just front page headline after headline that the government had captured a flying saucer. Don Schmidt from the Center for UFO Studies in Chicago is convinced that the Roswell case is the linchpin in America's ongoing alien cover-up. We have over 550 witnesses 
They were there. They handled the debris. They saw the craft. They saw the bodies. They handled the crew members of that craft. And invariably, they all say, this was not from this earth. This is the actual site where the Roswell saucer was discovered, along with the bodies of three extraterrestrial missionaries who didn't survive the collision. The debris and the dead were impounded and taken away for top secret study, while a classified investigative committee called the Majestic 12 was organized by President Truman. And a government cover-up was initiated with a calculated disinformation campaign. The military, I know for a fact, has established what's called disinformation programs, officially sanctioned deception programs. This is covered by a regulation at Department of Defense level that's secret. This is the case with the unidentified flying objects. I cannot say that the Roswell incident was a cover-up, but I can certainly say that the government back then and today acted like it was a cover-up and has been subject to being accused of a cover-up. The flying saucer debris at Roswell was attributed to a downed weather balloon. There was no explanation for the alien body parts among the wreckage. Before long, other sightings were dismissed as optical illusions caused by electrified swamp gas, with elaborate demonstrations staged for newsreel cameras to back up the claim. But while the Pentagon refused to publicly admit aliens had arrived on Earth, their top secret internal memos told a different story, even detailing the various ships and the creatures they had autopsied. Meanwhile, the American people fell in love with flying saucers, sensing something playful in their alien design. Before long, even the military seemed to fall under the trance of the UFOs. Government inventors began to mimic what they were seeing in the sky in a strategy to stumble upon the secrets of advanced alien technology. These rare films chronicle those primitive efforts. At a symposium conducted by Princeton University, weird and wonderful flying machines developed for the Army go through their paces. The flying scooter, for instance, with only a seven horsepower motor. Or this flying, what have you, just count your fingers after starting the fans. The naive attempts to copy the saucers began to look foolish, especially in July of 1952, when real alien ships were routinely buzzing over Washington, D.C., leading fighter pilots on frustrated chases lasting as long as six hours. It was the first time since the War of 1812 that our nation's capital had been successfully invaded by a foreign power. By the early 1960s, UFOs were having a chilling effect on our defense operations. Their tremendous speed often caused them to be misidentified as incoming intercontinental ballistic missiles, putting American air bases on red alert. There needed to be some way for the U.S. and the Soviets to distinguish between nuclear attack and alien visitors. A weapon is installed in the Pentagon, but it's a weapon of peace. This is the teletype that will operate at the U.S. end of an open line to Moscow. This link, it is hoped, will help avoid misunderstandings that could possibly trigger a catastrophe. Now a president could be in touch with the Russian premier in a matter of seconds. The hotline between Moscow and Washington was set up so they could go ahead and make last minute pleas that uh, we're not attacking you and you're not attacking us. The purpose for this was to ensure that a nuclear war would not be touched off by a UFO appearing on the scopes and being mistaken for en enemy aircraft. The hotline eased some international tensions, but it didn't halt the interaction between the military and the aliens, which continues to this day. November of 1975, essentially every SAC base in the United States was visited by UFOs. We have reason to believe that the UFOs went ahead and uh, had some effect on changing the codes, the, the codes within the missiles, within the launch control uh, facility, to change where the missiles would hit. 1976, September, Iran, two F-4s tried to intercept a UFO and shoot on the, uh, shoot upon the UFO. The weapon systems of the planes go dead. 
the uh, communication systems go dead. These are just two examples of cases which sound like they came out of science fiction, but in reality, they're from government documentation, documents released by the State Department. Two main engines up and burning. September 1991, Space Shuttle Mission 48. Commander Clayton and his crew point their cameras at the planet's horizon for a live broadcast to Earth. Many viewers noticed an alien ship playfully cavorting around the shuttle at tremendous speeds. NASA still refuses to acknowledge the incident. But since that time, the space agency no longer allows public access to live unscrambled television signals from shuttle missions. Currently in 1995, the Federal Emergency Management Agency trains personnel with a manual that suggests techniques in communicating with extraterrestrials encountered in the line of duty. This document is in marked contrast to a federal law passed by Congress in 1969, which makes it illegal for any American to have contact with an extraterrestrial, punishable by a $5,000 fine and a year in jail. Ironically, both documents were composed by a government which refuses to publicly admit that there is intelligent life on other planets. Indications are that government, military, and scientific leaders will soon release nearly a half century of official documentation of ongoing alien encounters on Earth. Perhaps they feel it would be too embarrassing not to reveal the truth before the truth reveals itself. But these FBI files acquired through the Freedom of Information Act outline nearly 50 years of UFO reports investigated by federal agents all across America. Overwhelming evidence that something sinister is at work. But look carefully. The torn pages, the ragged copies, the large areas blacked out in an effort to keep secrets locked away. If we are keeping information, which I am certain we are from the American public, on unidentified flying objects, then were wrong. Government has an obligation to the people to tell the truth. No matter what that truth might be, the people have a right to know that planet Earth is being visited by a highly evolved intelligence that is not from this, from this world. When we return, Meet the people who have already experienced disturbing contact with creatures from another world. They don't ask permission, they take you. See how government is monitoring mutant life forms which have already staked their claim on planet Earth. And join Robert Urich on the fringes of the future in Walt Disney World's Magic Kingdom as Disney Imagineers prepare the public for their inevitable alien encounter.